Okay, last topic to talk about light with as far as tonight goes is the polarization of light. So I'll go back to our drawing with electromagnetic radiation here. So as you recall, we have in an electromagnetic wave, we've got the electric field in one plane. So perpendicular to that is the magnetic field and perpendicular to both of these is the velocity. Now do you guys recall when we had three mutually perpendicular things, we had certain rules associated with a lot of them. Yeah, what kind of rules were those? Right hand rules. Turns out you can do a right hand rule with this if you want to. So with the right hand rule with this, you remember where your fingers most often pointed in most of your right hand rules? Well, it depends on the right hand rule, the ones we did. So your fingers actually pointed with the magnetic field, whereas your thumb usually went with the velocity or the current. And so in this case, I'm gonna point my fingers in the direction of the magnetic field coming out this way. So I'll have my thumb in the direction of the, let's see if I can do this, the direction of the electric field, and then coming out my palm, so would be the velocity. Cool, and that's a right hand rule for electromagnetic waves. I don't really care, but when we talk about the polarization of light, so it turns out it can have any orientation, right? So here I've got the electric field on this axis, magnetic field on this axis, but I could rotate this all the way around 360 and have a, you know infinite number of possible polarizations associated with light. And the big thing is that they're always gonna be mutually perpendicular to each other, but they don't have to be the same as every other light wave out there. And so if light is unpolarized, you've got a mass of all those different orientations associated with it. We define the orientation or the polarization of light based on the direction of the magnetic, I'm sorry, the direction of the electric field. Cool? So it turns out we have polarizing filters. So, and how they work exactly is a little bit complex. So, but say that a polarizing filter is only gonna let light primarily of one orientation make it through. And I say primarily of one. So we have a couple different equations. So one is for shining unpolarized light. So through this lovely filter. And what we find out is that the amount of light that makes it, that transmits through this polarizing filter essentially half of what you started with. So if we call I naught the intensity of the light heading towards the filter, unpolarized light, then the amount that transmits out the other side is just half of the original amount. Now on the other hand, if you notice then, a lot of the different polarizations have been blocked from passing through. This is the basis for how what works. Yeah, polarizing sunglasses. So polarizing sunglasses take unpolarized light from everything in, you know, around us so, and block out half of that light so, from passing through. So on the other hand though, if this light right here that made it through goes to shine through another polarizing filter. So and let's just say we orient the polarizing filter here. Let's redraw this a little bit. We orient that other polarizing filter in a different orientation than the one that we just had. So then the amount of light that actually is gonna make it through now out the other side is equal to the original intensity times cosine squared theta, where theta is the angle between the polarized light that's incident and the transmission axis of the polarizing filter. And so here, the further they are apart, the less it's gonna work. So if we had these oriented 90 degrees apart, then how much of the incident light on the second polarizing filter would make it through? Zero, because cosine of 90 is zero. So cosine of 90 squared is zero. Cool, that's what you find out with polarizing sunglasses. So if you take the two lenses and take them off the glasses and you put one, so, in front of a light source and then take the other one and turn it 90 degrees, you'll find out that it goes black and none of the light makes it through and it doesn't seem to make any sense, but it's evidence that light is indeed polarizable. Uh, if we look, the problem associated we got with this one is number four. So a number four says unpolarized light passes through a polarizing filter before, not before, before passing through a second polarizing filter oriented 60 degrees from the first filter. What fraction of the intensity of the original unpolarized light passes through 
the second filter. Cool. So first part is what fraction of the unpolarized light makes it through the first filter. Great. The next question is then what fraction of that makes it through the last filter? Well, in this case, it's going to be cosine of theta squared or cosine squared theta, same diff. What is the cosine of 60? Half. Half. What's the, the cosine of 60 squared? Yeah, one fourth. So then relative to the amount of unpolarized light we had to begin with, what fraction makes it all the way through? Both filters. Yeah, just half, and then a fourth of the half is an eighth. And that's the fraction that made it all the way through. So obviously I picked nice numbers, and we can pick not so nice numbers and stuff, but that's exactly how it works. So two equations for two different situations, either unpolarized light passing through a filter or polarized light passing through a filter.